distribute in this, this remains standing for these items in the program. Shall we all rise in my mind? Let's rise to our hands. Let us pray. Now, my Father, we thank you this morning and we appreciate you for the grace and the blessing of our life. Thank you for bringing us today to the very good school. Father, we say that we can be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, in the name of God, today's activities to your commandments, we pray that the Lord of heaven will take absolute control of the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that this program will be part of and life will transform in the name of Jesus. We invite your presence here with you to pray that you can do it and do it in the name of Jesus. And ahead of today's program, all of you will praise all our creation and be found to the name of God. Thank you, Father, for your love service. In Jesus, one of you will be
But then, whatever it is that you go through here, it is to prepare you for the future. And the washing department has thought it wise to bring all of us together, students of accounting, finance, economics, and even other students at the university, to talk about practical ways through which we can invest in our future. I can assure you that you will have a short time here today. You're going to be hearing stories of how people invested in their future and today they are reaping the fruits of those investments. So please don't be in a hurry, sit back, relax. We won't spend too much time, but every second, every minute, every hour spent here is going to be a valuable time. It is my singular honor this morning to introduce some of the guests that we have in our midst. We have the Vice Chancellor, Professor Anthony Akina. He is the EP representative by our very own. Some of you know him, the pastoral uh, guest, you know him as well. He's EP represented by Professor Vincent. You're welcome, sir. He is the Director of the Directorate of Educational Services and Training. We also have with us this morning the Bursa of the University. The chief host of this event, Mrs. M. O. Lutani. We have the deputy Bosa as well. He needs no introduction. He's our very own Mr. Omori. You're welcome. I also want to uh, acknowledge the presence of other staff in the Bosnian department. You can see them spotting their beautiful t shirts wherever you are. Let me just indicate through a wave of my staff of the Bosnian department. Thank you, you're welcome. We have with us this morning Dr. A.C. Adebayi. Apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. He is the head of the department, accounting department, King's University. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, sir. We love you, please. Come forward, please come forward, sir.
is uh, Mr. Isaac Adaba, our own, our bank. He's a general level of this great institution in the Department of Psychology. He will be making a presentation on the four sheets of success. Four sheets for success. He's a student, he's a student like you. He's a student like you, but somehow he has achieved a level of success in his academics, but he has good standing, and even in the business level on this campus. Why don't you listen to him and hear the secrets, some of the secrets to his success? And finally, we have Mr. Fiona Sahid, who is here to represent Mr. Adeli Adibayo of Zenith Bank. And he will be enlightening us on the topic investing in your future. It's not all about academics. You have a great future and you need to prepare for it. As part of our youth development efforts during the World Youth Week, an entrepreneurial competition was organized by the department in which three winners emerged. Seed money will be given to them to kickstart or support their businesses. This winner will be announced tomorrow. How was the 7th of November 2019 during the public lecture and the awards will be given to them. As the discussant share from the world of experiences, I urge you to open your mind, to take in as much as you can and determine to live here with something that will change your life and make you a better person. Remember, the difference between the successful and the failed is in the knowledge they have and in the doing. Johan Morgan Van said, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Wishing is not enough, we must do. In conclusion, the story of the ten virgins readily comes to my mind. Five of them were wise, while the other five were foolish. What differentiated the wise from the foolish? Where, one, the preparedness of the wise. Two, planning, they planned ahead. Three, they are proactiveness. They were not living only for the present. They were proactive. They looked into the future and they planned and prepared for the future. This program has been designed to prepare you for the great future that lies ahead of you. Be like the wise friends. Thank you, and God bless you. Give the warm round of applause for the bosom. I want to bring up very quickly our four Vice Chancellor's keynote address. Representing the Vice Chancellor is Professor Vincent. A warm round of applause for the gentleman. Presence of 
in this conference. I'm not familiar to all of them, but you have been introduced already. Then, other special guests, is there any by representative? Is there any by around? Okay, he's okay, represented. And then, the right from the city you are all welcome. Then, the, the, somebody came from King's University, I heard. The doctor, you are welcome, sir. So, and all other persons who are here, you are all welcome in Jesus' name. Then, my able students, the students of accounting, economics, business administration, finance, marketing. Please, can you give yourself a big round of applause? You know, this program was exclusively designed for you. That's why I asked you to give yourself a round of applause. Because last year there was no program like this. Was there anyone? Two years ago we didn't have something like this. So it means that you are special. I believe also that in the history of Redeemers University, this is the first of its kind. Am I right? Sir? This is the first of its kind. And so you are privileged. So why are we here? Why are we here? We are here first and foremost to be part of the celebration of God's Week. We all know what the boss will represent in the university. Is there anybody here that did not go to the boss school? Or you have never been to boss school since you came to the mass university? I can then stand on the position of the vice president to say that your admission should be withdrawn if, if there is no money. But I'm sure every one of us have gone to boss school. I too have gone to boss school several times. So you see that boss school is an integral part of the university system. So somehow, somehow, you will go to the boss school. And they are working tirelessly to ensure that the university finances are well managed. And some of you that are here today, you will find yourself in the same position. And that is why they need to be celebrated. And even though the society does not give you fit to celebrate them, they decided to celebrate them. So can we celebrate them now today? So uh, on behalf of the university management, I want to appreciate the effort of the Boston in ensuring that the university finances are well managed. So we are here to celebrate them first. Then secondly, we are also here to learn. We are here to learn from them. They should have invited some other people from other places, but they decided to invite the students so that you can understand what they are doing. You can also learn from those who have succeeded. There are some of us who are studying accounting, and you want to be a chartered accountant. She is one, he is one, and there are so many of them here. So it is an avenue for every one of us to learn from them. Let me say this also, that apart from the discussion, the three of them, the experts that were invited to address us today, you can also walk up to any one of them. The purpose of this library is interaction uh, section, am I right? So it is not only to interact with the invited guests, you can also interact with the staff of the boss speak department. Is someone with me? You know, this program is making it so easy for you to meet someone like Mrs. Pollution David. You know she's very busy. How many of us have entered her office personally to see her? Can I see your hand? If you have had the privilege to enter her office to talk with her, okay, so you have the privilege. So during this interaction section, just walk up to her, walk up to Mr. Mahmoud, ask whatever question you want to ask. There are several other chapters that come times, you know, here in our midst in the university. Walk up to them. Seven bank representatives are here, unity bank reps are here. Walk up to them, ask them questions. That is the purpose of this gathering. And I want to believe that in the end, you will not um, regret that you are here today. So today, I expect in the end of this program that you be inspired. I expect that you will be enlightened with so many information concerning the Boston unit. I also expect you to be well positioned.
for your future. Because the purpose or the theme of this year is what? Is what do you call it again? Towards impacting life for a better future, a better tomorrow. A better tomorrow. So I expect that during this meeting, you will acquire a lot, a lot of information and knowledge that will position you for a better tomorrow as a student. Then finally, I also expect you to be equipped for life after school. It is not just enough to have certificates. Education is to give you certificates. When you are living with the University, we'll give you a certificate, a BSc accounting, BSc economics. That's not enough. It is what you are able to acquire, what you find in you. Someone told the story of a man that he was, you know, well educated. He had all the certificates he could have. And one day, robbers came to his house and robbed him of everything. Collected his certificate and he could not get anyone again. Then he turned out that they asked him a question, what are you going to do? He said, my life is more important than the certificate. So what you have inside of you is more important than your certificate. And this is just an avenue for you to equip yourself much more better. So I advise you today that you should be attentive. Give rapt attention to all that will take place today. I know that, you know, once in a while, my students will be distracted, you know, but I want to advise you, give the very attention, the highest level of attention to all the processes that will take place today. Then, be expectant. Be expectant. Don't just be a, an onlooker. Expect to go out here with something, at least one thing, so that when you are leaving, you can say, when I attended Boston Week today, this was what I went home with. Am I communicating to somebody? So make sure that you go out with one thing. You don't have to go away with everything. Just one thing, something remarkable that you can put in your diary and say that today, this was what I learned. I pray that at the end of this program today, you will be richly enlightened in Jesus' name. Once again, thank you very much for coming and uh, God bless you. Another round of applause for Professor Peterson. Thank you very much sir, for those kind words. You check the front of your program. the list of those who have come to interact with us today and so uh, we want to bring them forward and as I call them, can I have Ms. Fumi please from the Bosch Department? Ms. Fumi, please come forward. Please a round of applause for her.
is a career graduate psychology student in the Department of Behavioral Studies in Regimash University. He is a young entrepreneur with managerial partnerships in a few startups. He is a founding partner for AIM, where he ventured into several forms of game investment and business opportunity. It would interest you to know that Mr. Agapa is a brand ambassador for our bike, our technology is limited. You're welcome to
want to use this little statement that says, stay hungry, stay foolish. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Do we know the go? Do we know the go? If I'm guys to do, do you have anyone of, 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 amongst us here that has it? The younger to learn, the younger to invent, the younger to create. Does that one process in those back? Do we know it loves to happen? It loves to happen. But it came back because it was hungry. Because there is hunger to learn. Something is created. A weak man will go and do what? Will go away. But he has this strong guy to succeed. And he came back and became the president of Abu. We need that life. We need that. That's the only way we can sustain a very profitable future. Invest in yourself. Your career is the engine of your wealth. Very, very important. The next is build your relationship. You can't get to your destination alone. You need others to be with you. For that reason, you should build your relationship. The most important relationship is the one with your family. So make time for them. Don't let it, don't let it become something that you dread later. Can we replace the family? Can we? Ten years down the line, you will be on your own. But there is a network that will be with you. And those are the network of people that, that are as hungry, they are as hungry as you were. So let us keep the relationship. A network that will be. I'm in accounting. Everything about accounting I know. Do I know anything about engineering, computer, sciences? Those areas you need network. Like I said, if you are finding the road is on top of and two decided to go out of this country. And three are in this country. It's only the ones that are moving on that will keep in touch. Don't let us lose the vision. It helps a lot. It helps a lot. Let that that accountant meet the engineer, the computer, computer scientist, the scientist. We can find a solution for tomorrow. Have you seen a computer company that doesn't need an accountant? Have you seen a computer company that doesn't need a business manager. That means everything is interrelated. That is relationship. Don't let us joke with you. And at the end of it all, it's only a good hope that you will be really, really, really ready to go home. If your home is not fit, or you have a relationship with your people or your family, nobody will want to go back home. Make time for your friends as well. Help them without keeping score, and in turn, they will love you. Make time for your friends as well. Help them without keeping score, and in turn, help you. Don't get those all your ways because you want to do something. And that is how I know that it's not the best. Don't let us do that. Let us always do things because it's necessary. It is important, it is going to help, it is going to impact on the society. The next one is build your spirituality. There will be difficult times, a bumpy time, those times that are tough. In tough times, it is your spirituality that helps you through. How close are you to your creator? Thank God we are with you. Are we going to anybody's devotion just because everybody's going to? Are we going to the, the 
only the nation is not just going to do it, but because we need to talk to our creator. Let us be strong spiritually. Build your spirituality through spiritual habits. This habit will be praying, reading scripture, or something else that works for you. The important thing is that you do it now before it comes um, to The next, build healthy habits. We all say healthy, healthy. Our physical care is essential for our productivity. If you are healthy, you, you can be productive for a long time. If you are it, you will also spend your resources dealing with health issues. In as much as we read, we go up and down, we do this. Let us check our blood. When last, I will go to the hospital just for a check-up, not for the treatment. Let us do that. Just for check-up, not for treatment. Prevention is better than. Prevention is better than. Let us remember, if you are healthy, you will take or go to places. Build area in three areas. The way you eat, rest, and exercise. Build it in three areas. The way you eat, rest, and exercise. Before I conclude, I want to read from an investor for improvement. Say the best investment you can make. Is one that you can beat. You can be taxed and not get even inflation you can take it. You can beat, you can be taxed, and not even inflation can take it away from you. Also, there are one investment that surpasses all others, and that is investing in yourself. Do we know what I'm referring to? Hello? Hello? Do we know what I'm referring to? Do we? Hello? Do we know what I'm referring to? We need to read. We need to go away from the four class, the four corners of our class. Let us make the set. Let us. Don't let us waste most of our time on Facebook alone. Let us do most of the messages, some information, and task ourselves. You cannot save time for future years, but you can invest in your future now. In conclusion, the fact is, the bright future won't happen. It will just come to you and plant our goal. You must work for it. You must invest in it. The more you invest in your future, the more you will The more you invest in your future, the more you will On that note, I say thank you. And you are very grateful for your Thank you.
when Facebook went public. At that point, he was the youngest player there. How many of us have seen Harry Potter? Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe became the youngest millionaire from the franchise with Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe is the guy Harry, that's Harry Potter. Uh, the point is, we are all trying to get somewhere. How many of us actually know those that have gotten there and learned from what they have to offer? Anyone that knows anybody, anybody's story that would just say something like, okay, this is the person I'm trying to beat right now, and it's how far I'm willing to go. Lots of the billionaires we know today, more of them didn't actually get a degree, like we're all here trying to get, we're all students here. Lots of billionaires today don't have just a basic degree, but they are well to do. At least we've seen, we even give out honorary degrees to people who are doing so much. The point again is, whoever we're going after, we need to understand what exactly they've done, how they've gotten there, the mistakes they've made, how we can avoid those mistakes. And that is where my own story comes in now, the post of success. So I have a few uh, lines I'm just going to read out. And it's very simple. At least I've done the first one, which was to introduce myself as a student here. So the second one now is why I do what I do. Uh, I made my first millionaire when I was 16. I made my first 5 million when I was 21. No, 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 because as fast as it was coming, it was going out again. Then I wanted to just pass it on and have fun in life. So as fast as it was coming, it was going out again. You know, my prayer then used to be that God, you know, I'm aiming to be as good as my man. He's had all that money, he's so young and all of that. So, like, I want to have that money right now. That was my prayer. And then I noticed God did something very tricky. He was answering the wrong prayers at the right time. Because at that point, the money was really in. As it was really in, it was going back out on nothing. And of course you have to get mature. When I got done in secondary school when I was uh, 16, I think I was 2012. Ten years later, I am just obtaining my first degree because I didn't want to go to school. When I was done in secondary school, I wanted to have fun in my money, just make money, spend money. That's all I care about. But you know, it's supposed to have people around you to advise. It's supposed to grow mature at some point. It's supposed to learn those things like the others who say. You know, they have a lot of things they say. But basically, guys, you understand that. You just want to have fun in life, that's the truth. You just want to like, come on, I want to have a million bucks now, just play it. That's what I want. I don't really want to care about anything. Now, I was able to get much at some point. I started understanding that there were priorities in life, there were things that had to come first, things that had to come before other things. So like, okay, fine, God, help me understand how to make money, how to manage money. Now I can manage money, but I'm not making it as well as I used to. That's the, the fast position. I say God made the answers the wrong prayers at the right time. Now I can manage money, so I think I want to make so much money again, but according to God, it's not time yet. It's time for something else, education, which is very critical in the life we live in right now. That's just my simple story. That's chapter two. Chapter three now, okay, is that we all want to do something interesting. We all want to do something crazy. We all want to do something no one has ever done before. How many of us have actually gone ahead to do something? How many of us have gone ahead to implement something to like, wow, that was cool, I can I just did something real great, man? How many of us? You can actually boast you've done something, something worthwhile, something you can say, no, this is me, I am proud of myself. Good or bad, it doesn't matter because I've done good things and bad things. I am not also proud of the bad things, but I'm proud of the good things. Uh, you know, when I realized that, Education was a key thing and it was the main thing. I wished I was doing education a long time ago, so right now I could be doing so many other things I want to actually be doing. It's my third year in the University, Theorem level now, and in 15 months we've had several projects which I've been able to um, headline. We've had several events, we've traveled a lot, we've done so many things. You know, last semester alone I had 20% in attendance because I wanted to be everywhere at all times and accomplish as much as I could while being a student. Oh, I'm on the first class, it doesn't matter, I'm killing it again, guys. So basically, what I'm saying is, sacrifices need to be made. Priorities, yes, education is all it is right now, that's what you're being paid for, that's what your grades are having fun in and all of that. But then, I don't want to be done with school and then I'm sitting back home waiting for service or hoping one uncle somewhere is going to connect me with one person somewhere and all that. That's not me. I could have one of them. I want to be done with school and you know, as fast as you're getting out of school, they're wanting you somewhere, they're calling you in one country and all that. That's, that's my aim. 
and thankfully it's actually happened because in my 15 months here, uh, I've had three job offers. I've turned them all down because I'm supposed to get my degree first according to what they say. Uh, I've made roughly over 10 million there in the last 18 months. Uh, what again? For me, it's more than money, but that's all that really matters most of So, more than money is my good at this point. So, the point is, again, according to my story, you want to get somewhere, you have to make sacrifices. Some things have to actually suffer a little. Maybe not that, but suffer a little. So, you can actually get some of those other things you really got it after. You know, really, really much impressed. We've seen that lots of our students, they want to go through life, they want to have fun, they want to live off hand to mouth, that kind of situation. And the truth is, there are some of us actually that sit down in the same community and want to exploit that uh, mindset. We know students will pay for any show we ask them to come to. We know students will be willing to travel anywhere. We say, okay, so you're printing this paper, we're out of we're not to have fun. We know that. So there are some of us who are praying times and we just sit down somewhere. We come up with one very funny idea. We tell school to approve it and we build you. And the truth is, you pay. And we take your money. You spend maybe like 20-25% on it on the actual project. Yeah, that's some 5% for oh my guys. When we go for holidays, we wall. And we would always want to explain that because people will always be people. There's always have, there always has to be a balance between good and evil. There has to be a balance between the sweet side and the sour side. Because if we don't have you and your money to exploit, then there's nothing we're really doing. So of course at some point we will now tell your kids, hey, you think we've made enough of you guys need to understand, you need to wise enough. Come and do something else now. Come and join us in doing this. Let the new oncomers come there. We'll exploit them, take their own money out. That's the truth of life. Be touch with touch. So as best as we can, we all need to come up with something that's going to make us stand out. That thing, that drive, that thing that you know, okay, this is my field, this is my creation, this is my event, this is my idea. There are people all over that are willing to sponsor. Echo Bank was a major sponsor of one of my projects this year. They gave me quite a huge sum. And I was just like, oh, you do this, you get this, you do that, you get this. It was just a basic transaction between myself and the bank. Now, when I come out, I'm not going to tell you, oh, Echo Bank gave me all that money, I spent it on this, 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 this. I was just going to tell you, oh, we had an idea, we were able to implement it, we did this, we did that, oh, thank God it was successful. We go to church, we do Thanksgiving. After that, we are going to pass. We still have money. Now, the reason why I do all I do. Two things matter to me most in this world. My mother, my siblings. Uh, my father, my father was younger than I am now when he had me, he had me in second school. You know that young love thing that they all say like, okay, come and have a girlfriend. You know, I'm willing to explore life and do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want. And uh, guys, if you don't understand where you're going soon, you will regret it a lot. Obviously he had me when he was 21, 22, when he was 17. So, gone out of wedlock, he didn't for so long, to the point that my dad going to the university. I remember filming the majors and pictures because I had to go with him to the university. That's where boys coming around all the time, girls coming around. So I could see things, they were always drinking, always smoking. Girls were all around that, like, okay, when girls are coming around so often, what is always going on? Those kinds of things were happening. That was my exposure, early on. One good thing from there, my love to travel came from there. Now I love being on the move. I don't like being stranded on the spot. This semester I love now, I'm supposed to be grounded, attend classes all the time, do what's required. It's giving me a headache. I want to move, I want to fly, I want to be able to do all I want to do at all times. Good thing came from there. The bad thing was the fact that he never married my mom. Had two boys again after me with my mom. Then he got the privilege to travel out of the country. He came back 10 years later, he's been married. Twice. The first one was the first from the second one he was good with. Then the next time he came back to the country, I'm supposed to go with him to my in-laws. To do something, do something, do something. Oh, I'm having issues with your wife. I'm having issues with your daughter, this, this, this. That was the second wife. My mom, two wives. Then the next time he comes again, five years later, I'm the best man for a new woman to get married to. <laughs> my dad's a great guy, man. He has to come to the you see my name. Don't try, don't try, don't try. It has to come here. The guy is a baller. Uh, I love all my step moms because it's common. When you have so many women like that scattered all around the world, they get you nice things. Really nice things. They take care of you, 
forget that particular. But see, it's only this. it pays the school fees once it does that, it tells me you're on your own. It pays my tuition, it pays my younger one's tuition. Once it does that, I am responsible for my younger ones. And my younger ones are somewhat like some of us one half form. Hey, my younger brother, my baby brother called me yesterday in this petty house and he wants to go to his studio to record his song. And then I'm like, he's 12. Who does want to record at 12? Well, of course, I, I want to support him. I believe in my own and their abilities. I'm like, okay, fine. It's all out. I'll pay like 10 installments. So just give me maybe the next six months. I'll be paying it like that. I'm just hoping it could learn something. My middle younger brother, oh, Jesus. He's a lot more handsome than I am. He's a lot more expensive than I am. And he makes, makes some money. Because he too lost to travel, he lost, he lost to explore his life, he lost to build things in life. My younger one walks in here and you walk out to some of our young ones with the That's how it is. So, that's the two reasons why I go there. My mom is back in Lagos. I pay the rent for my mom. I pay the rent for my younger ones who start out everywhere. We don't stay together. We never grow up together. You know, I friends for my mom. They have to always be full stuff in the house. I invest in our businesses. You know, I do things. And we're talking expenses on a weekly level. Now, I'm doing all of that. I'm back here in school, responsible for quite a number of students also. Because, okay, you have a girlfriend, it is no longer you and yourself, it is you and your situation. Because, come on, as a man, you must spend on your babe. Hey, if you don't do that, you are not a man in this school. Imagine your babe has her babes. Ah, you are finished. That's the situation. Especially when you're good with girls and you're good with guys, they expect that this is a level you can always follow at, so they want you to always meet those responsibilities. If they will up to you, we will be all hungry in the class. You have a choice not to buy. And when you buy, understand something, when you buy, you don't just buy them what they want, you've actually bought them. It's called gainful investments. Now, we all sit down in class and everybody wants something, and you tell them I have the opportunity to provide all of that for you at no cost. What comes to your play, man? This guy is good. But then I tell you, we need to do this, 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 this. Subconsciously, you owe me. You give you yourself the move, and you owe me. Because when I tell you move, you move. That's how it's by people. When you, when you do things all the time, and you know you have something going, people can always come to be like, oh, no, this guy is good at what he does. When you're always invested in them, in kind, in cash, in abilities, in words, when you tell them to move, they have to move. Subconsciously, they just go and they themselves don't know that what they have to move at your back. So that is the basic way. Why I do what I do. I have to take care of my family. So if I don't do it, <laughs> my family will stop and they will pray some kinds of prayers for me. Those are the basic understandings of what I have. So I think I have two more points to my story, or two more chapters rather. Alright, so uh, two things. How I come up with what I do and my failures. Those are the things I have to tell you. How I come up with what I do? Someone came to my room two nights ago and then he asked me the same question, which was what actually uh, gave me the advantage to bring this up during the discussion. How I come up with what I do when I do come up with those things? I never really know because I have this joy, this thrill to travel all the time. I love to meet new people and from interacting, of course, you get to see things, you get to know things, you get to actually experience things every day. When you move around a lot, okay, you move in the same at all. You can't think like a commissioner anymore, you have to think like a senator. If you move with the governor, or now you have to think like a president, because they can use you properly. I had a contract one time with the Palace of the Odeon of e Fair. We proposed a project to them to implement, and to also come on board as a major partner with him as the royal father. Now, they saw my proposal. It was good, they loved it, they pushed it, happy and selected it with this cost. And next thing is okay. They are willing to partner with me if I partner with them on their own projects. So they want to do something with giving out scholarships and all of that across the entire southwestern states. So they're like, okay, you have a good paper work. I like the way you tie it. I like the way you spend yourself on your words. Because there's something called selling yourself on paper. And they said I did that very well. So the next thing is, we're willing to give you what you want if you're willing to give us what we want from you. That was six months of my life gone on that project. I, you won't believe after I implemented their project, I didn't get a dime from them. First of all, they didn't get to come over my project. Second of all, now it wasn't a bad thing because it was a good experience. We traveled, we had fun, we spent money. 
But in the way you're just experiencing things, you have to still build yourself over time. And that was a very good experience for me to understand that certain things in life are more important than certain other things. Now it's not about making money anymore. Now it's all about posterity. It's all about putting myself out there. Doing what I think is most important right now. Money comes, money goes. The only thing that ever matters is the people you are standing with. If I can tell you I've worked with 10 presidents and yeah, I made a hundred million and I've spent the whole hundred million, but I can still have those presidents. That's what really matters at the end of the day. Money comes, money goes, but the people you have left with you are all that matters. Because if you have a person who wants a millionaire, and you have 10 people who want 10 millionaire, that's the entire network at your disposal. Because when they believe in you, they are willing to give you almost anything. We have people now that we work with that when you call them and you tell them this and this and this is what we want to do. The question is, okay, how much will it cost us? Because they believe in what you want to do, they believe in those ideas. They believe if you deliver, they've seen experience on it that okay, if this was you, you can actually believe in what he's saying he has to do. And that's the truth. Once you're able to sell yourself, understand that this is what I can do, this is what I can sell myself on, this is my market, this is who I look at, believe in what I have to offer. You could you take it away. You don't have to worry about your play you don't have to worry about how much money you have in that account. It's all about making that impact, and when you're able to do that, there's no value, there's no network to you again, anyone can place. It's all about what you can offer and what you can make at that point. Alright, so lastly, my failures and how I got to deal with them. Before I got to this point, when I failed at the projects, and we we're talking months of my life just gone, and I have to go break down somewhere. And I got to understand that there's so many things more important in life than just failing and feeling like that's the end of life. I feel like something, the next thing is how can I convert that failure into the next best thing? On my system, I have business proposals, hundreds of them. Some will try to implement, some will have the issues we're implementing, some will go to implement halfway, some will have goals. We're working on contracts right now, I'm talking tens of millions on there. And when they're paying all the time and they get to the point, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, so they can't pay you anyway. Like, what do I do? I'm at this point already. You have to keep going. That's the truth. There's nothing more you can do because you don't want to go to go somewhere and just kill yourself with depression. If you feel you have to hold over your stance, you just have to get up and keep going. So my final advice to everyone is I realize one thing. If I'm doing all of this on my own and I get up there, I'm gonna have an issue. If I'm making all this money and I get up there, I'm gonna to have to start paying everybody else to do whatever has to be done. But when myself and my generation can build it ourselves together, so when you are senator, when I'm commissioner, when he's the president, when he's the governor, it's a phone call, they're like, bro, what's up? We need to do this, this, the way we used to do it then. Or oh, Nigeria has this issue, we need to try it like this. It's not about who, who can be paid to get this thing done. We have, which country do we need to go to to have somewhere to come down here? But when we can build ourselves together right now, when we get the we'll have much more problem. Because when you have your own billion dollars, I have my billion dollars, he has his, she has hers. We can do almost anything together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Isaac. I think um, the applause says it all. You have virtually said it all. From telling us about goals, to making sacrifices, to having networks, to investing in people, you know, to education and all of that. He has said so, so, so much. And one good thing I liked about his session was the fact that he sounded like a brutal businessman. And when you go out there into the world of business, trust me, businessmen, they are even more brutal than he sounded today. So please, one more time around about this. We are coasting home gradually and um, the only lady between the uh, two men <laughs> and I'm sure that the ladies here present you're going to um, enjoy this session because this is a lady like you she is a success story right from her days as an undergraduate she was a success story and she's still a success story just before then, I want to acknowledge the presence of um, the Directorate of Internal Audit of University University, led by the Chief Internal Auditor, Mrs. Akina. You're welcome. I think I also saw our dear Head of Department for the Department of Accounting.
think I also spotted somebody who is a friend of all students. I'm sure if I mention the person's name, you'll say, oh, we did. I think I spotted the CSO. I don't know if he's still around. Okay, he has stepped out. Okay, Skipo is also around. The warming up for the match that is going to happen this evening between the Boshi Department and the Registry Department. So, it's happening for all of you guys to come, come out and come and see more important in action. <laughs> I understand we also have representatives from Illori University. A lecturer and student from Illori University, please. Illori College of Education, you're welcome. Please, can we have the students as well? Please stand up for your location. Please stand up for your location. All right, moving on. This session we expect to be interactive. And please, if you have questions, uh, make sure you note those questions down. You will be having the opportunity to ask those questions immediately after this session. Please make welcome Miss Shell Peters. It's a pleasure to be here again. Good to see all the beautiful faces. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, as um, the writer said, my name is Yubashi Peters. Um, I graduated from the Mass University. And I'm 10 years now. 10 years ago. Thank God for everything. So, this section is meant to be interactive. Um, Can go to their website and 
you know, send your CV to them. And then when I was in school, I always thought I wanted to work for one of the big four firms. And for some of you in accounting and finance, I'm sure you know what those firms are. So I went to your website. The website I went to them was KPMG PWC. I think I went to EY. PWC website was, um, I couldn't, I was filling the form, but I couldn't put form in the form. But KPMG, they just said to send their CV, the CV to, I think they have like a career or email then, and I sent my CV. When I was on camp, while I was still on camp, they sent me an email, they replied me to come for a test. I, I think they replied in less than 48 hours that should come for a test. And of course, when you're on camp, you, can't, you, know, you, are not, you don't have your leave, but you can't just go off, off camp. So I went to the state coordinator's office, and I asked for permission to go out, and they, they did not give me the permission, of course, for whatever reason. And what I did was to reply the message, and, and I told the sender that I was on camp, NYC camp, and I'm unable to attend until after the camp. So they rescheduled me for the test. Then, you know, on the personal day, they would give all of us our cover letters, and, you know, I was posted to a bank, and <laughs> I literally really cried. I'm going to be laughing like, oh my God, look at this ungrateful girl. You are posted to a bank. Everybody wanted to work in a bank. And, you know, I, I never wanted to work in a bank. I wanted to do something around teaching, you know, uh, or for my NYC. I don't know why. I just wanted to do something around teaching because, um, it was something I was actually passionate about. So I went for, of course, we all you know, went to our uh, PO, uh, place of primary assignment. And when we got there, one of them told us that we, are, we requested 50 people from NYC. We want two ones on first class. We are not rejecting any one of you. So you can imagine that. And so with this data, I went for, for my KPMG test, I passed. So I had to put it on the form that I'm unable to you know, continue with the interview process until after my NYSC or you know, so much you know, before I just before I finish my NYSC. So around July, when I started NYC class C, most of us in primary university always go for class C. October, November. So I went to my NYC campus started in November. So around July, I got an email, thank God for that. You know that uh, the test I did, I indicated that I'll be available around this time. Can they send me for the interviews? I said, oh, of course. So I did the, there are three levels of interviews. I did the interviews and to the great report I passed. And um, before my NYC, I got my, um, my letter of employment. So after my NYC, I resumed, you know, even before my NYC, I had to go for the do this three weeks accounting course at KPMG. So I had to go for it and later after my NYC, I resumed. That was how my professional career started. And for some of you that know people that work in consulting, consulting is a very, is an intense environment. Hello? Hello? It is extremely intensive. There's, there's a lot of exposure. You cannot take that away. The learning you will learn, you will learn a lot because you will interact with people of like minds, intelligent minds. So for you to, so that's why I'm going to say, well, I wrote KPMG test, I wrote Deloitte test, I did not pass. Right? It's beyond the good knowledge. It's about, you know, your, your attitude. You know, how can you think outside the box? Of course, there's a place of learning. Of course, knowing how, you know, the tests are really start, knowing, you know, what to read and all that. But at the same time, it's beyond that why you go through three stages of interviews or more. And you do all those psychometric tests because you must just know that you are the right fit for their culture. You are the right fit for the environment they are creating. And this environment has been created for decades. So they don't want people to come and just come and spoil what they, they know they've invested in for so many years. And that was how I started my professional journey. And it's been, um, it's been so, I've worked in three places so far, um, from KPMG. I spent about five years there, then I moved to Deloitte. Then uh, did uh, less than three years in Deloitte, two years ago, then I've been global so as a chief financial officer. Hello? So when you 
I'm coming in, you know, I, I've interviewed people during the course of my uh, career as well. I've interviewed a lot of people that are looking for employment. And you guys are young people, you know, you want to get good jobs or you want to start your business things. You know, you want to do well. Okay, I see. You said fantastic things. You said, yeah, Mr. Said, and he was telling you about you know, some of the key things you need to take, you know, along this journey. You know, as young people, of course. You know, am I saying the journey will always be smooth? Of course not. There will be mistakes, right? And at the same time, as you are making those mistakes, you are learning from them immediately. You are picking yourself up. Hello? And you are learning from the experiences and you are taking corrective action immediately. So, what have I learned? Over time, for young people that are coming to, you know, to the, to the, to the professional world or you know, wherever you find yourself, you have to be teachable. Hello? Hello, you have to be teachable, you have to come down from your high horses. You know, you can come up with your, you can have your first class, you can have your two one. I remember when I met back here every day. When I, when I finished from one, I was the best writing student in school. So of course I did well, I had very good jobs, CGP. But when I, you know, when I got to KPMG, and <laughs> I was just to this of best writing student, the best of people, this of best people, and I like, oh my God, like, I felt like, you know, it's just, just one of those things. Everybody in my department, financial advisor, was a financial advisor, everybody in my department was kind of a chartered accountant. Some of them have ACA, some of them already have CFA. So there's really nothing to be there's nothing to be proud about or something. Of course, you take pride in your successes because of course, you know, you've worked hard for it. Okay? But at the same time, you know, you have to come down to your high courses and be teachable. The academic, what they taught you in school is of course relevant in the workplace, but <laughs> the work environment is different from the university environment. Are, are, are we on the same page? Yes. Are, are we together? Yes. What you learned in school, it is uh, absolutely relevant. And your professional courses, your ICANN, your SCCA, your uh, NIM, your, and all the you know, your CIP and all the exercising and the wonderful professional courses are very good and very good. However, what it takes to succeed in the work environment is beyond intelligence. You know, who has character? Being teaching is also a, it's, it's about character as well. Coming down, you know, learning from you know people sitting at the feet of people that are your your seniors and your people that have, you know that have been dead and learning. Because when they are bringing you into the work environment, they don't expect you to know much. When, I, when I'm interviewing an entry level person, whether when I was in or whether I was in consulting, I'm not bringing them because uh, because the person came and come and define all the very nice things they have read in textbooks. And he told me about the Excel that he knows he has, he can do, he's very stable to stop in Excel, he's over 10, I'm talking about Excel over 10, I'm not over 10, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and all the nice things. But people are looking for people that have you know, good character, they are teachable. And another very important thing is, you know, you have to develop yourself. I've, 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 I've seen people, you know, you, you started in a company, right? And maybe the company is still in your growing company, you started with them. So you can expect that, oh, even as I'm growing this company, the next five years, they'll probably make me the end of the department. Have we? So people expect that. Is there a bad expectation? Yeah. Absolutely not. It's your because everybody should have a career plan. You should know that, oh, I'm entering this company, you know, in the next one year, I want to be promoted to this level. In the next five years, I want to be a manager there. It's absolutely a good, it's, it's a fantastic thing. In fact, some interviews, so at some interviews, they'll ask you, when you see yourself in five years in this company, I don't know if you're reading it as a question, but that's one of the popular ones. Because they want to see if you are thinking about them and you are thinking about your growth as it relates to working in the organization. And no, you know, imagine going and saying that in five years' time, I see myself as a, as a manager at that place. You know, this person does not have a long term vision, does not have a long term view, right? So imagine you tell them that, oh, I see myself as a manager in this organization, I see myself as, you know, a team lead or whatever it is. I'm sure you've done your research. And in five years, you just expected that, oh, that position will just fall on your last. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way. As your company is growing, you also have to be growing. Twice as fast. She also what I'm saying. And how do you achieve that? You know, you continue to develop yourself. Hello? Learning does not stop in the university. You might think that when oh, you are in school, you are sometimes like that. 
study for four or five years, I'm tired after school like this, and I finish my high camp, I do my CIPM, I'm not doing it again, I'm finished beating. Hello, I think sometimes that can be a very big mistake. Because it's it, it's not just about the focus of the university. There are a lot of as in in this, you know, in this present internet um, environment that we are in, education has moved beyond brick and mortar. Hello? Hello, are we together? Education has moved beyond brick and mortar. It has now gone digital. So there are a lot of things you can do, you know, to continue to develop yourself and make yourself relevant, you know, for either where you are or for the next big thing. Are we together? You might, I don't know, you might think, oh, I'm not going to maybe this thing that she will say, oh, it's still four years. I, I don't need it now, but please, just note it down. You know, four years will run very quickly. I told you that I finished from not ten years. I can't even believe this thing that is ten years already. So time, you know, runs very fast. So for you to develop yourself, there are a lot of tools out there. You know, you have beauty me. And no, you have beauty me. There's a story of the guy that still amazes me to today. You know, uh, in my present organization, we, we, we moved from um, Google's G Studio to Office 365. And when we move to Office 365, you know, there are a lot of exciting things you can do. You, know, you can do with Office 365. Do you all know of you know Office 365? Do you know Office 365? Okay, maybe, you know, Microsoft, uh, is it Microsoft, I don't know how to put it, but application for, for like offices, you know, you can have your uh, 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 official outlook. Even you know, I have office of my personal account, you can do how to things and all the exciting things. So we discovered, okay, so lots of things you can do with office, you can even automate some of our processes, and you can, you know, approve things remotely. You don't have to be in the office to start doing PayPal approval. So we just want to automate that process for us. And um, you know, we look for, you know, start looking for the candidate. And the person that we got, you know, I've not even worked in a place where he was he has developed some of those automation processes. What did you do? We just went on UDB. You can go you have permission to Google now. Check you can look for UDB on your phone. U D E M Y. Just went on UDB and did a course on Microsoft Flow. In fact, he did not even finish the course. He just he did it to it. He only, you know, online you can audit the course where you don't pay for the full course. You just, you know, go through the curriculum and you don't know, just do the final exam, something like that. He audited the course, so he didn't even do the final exam. And when he came for the interview, and I was, you know, because I also even, you know, checked some videos on YouTube or YouTube on how to do Microsoft Word, and I was learning it as well. So I was able to ask him, you know, answer this. Um, Questions about you know, how to go about that. I even gave him a laptop to kind of demonstrate. And you know, I was surprised. And it, it was, I was not, I was not so impressed because I felt that I wanted to more experience. But I was talking my boss. I thought just a game or show. Just hire him. You know, and this guy now, he's doing very well. How did he get the job? He just went to do something on his team. It did not even cost him anything apart from his internet. Cost of internet. And no, and there are other courses now, there's Hysteria, there's EDS, as well as students. You know, you can learn things about business, business communication. Because academic writing, I remember that when I was in, when I was in KPMG, and they gave me a part of the book to do, you know, and when I wrote, <laughs> my in charge, yeah, we call them in charge, the person that provides the project, she said, oh, she I said, this is big, this is academic writing, or I was academic writing again. <laughs> because the way you write, you know, your research project, and you are doing all the citations, and you are, you know, you are all excited. When you are writing a business report, it is, it is different. The way you, you know, your, your English, the way you compose what the words you use, as if you are not even in advice you, it's different. You know, you can go on YouTube and learn about business communication. It's not about speaking English. Hello? You can learn about interpersonal skills. If you talk about relationships, your next networking. You know, I talked about you on LinkedIn already. I see a lot of graduates on the graduate now on LinkedIn. I get a lot of some of those requests as well. You know, and how do you even communicate with someone? How do you even introduce yourself to someone on LinkedIn? Hello? Because it, that would be the place where you get your job. So opportunities are found. You have to be teachable. You have to develop yourself. Another thing is you have to be diligent. And we are in the university environment, you know, all of you are all diligent, all of you are first class, two more doing exciting stuff. But the tenacity and diligence and the resilience you need to in both ways is different. If you are in school, probably on, I don't know, probably how many, how many units was 
months are you doing? 24, 25? Eh? What? Has anybody doing more than 25 units? No. Eh? No, that means that you spend maximum of 25 hours in the classroom in a week. Abby? Sometimes, you know, when I was when I was in KPMG, sometimes I'm, I'm at work for 18, 19 hours. And it's like that on the road. Hello, and some of us, you know, you have a 24 unit course, you are still struggling to meet up, right? When you're in the workplace and you have to work, you know, for back to back for the next one week and you're sleeping for one hour, how do you do it? And you're doing 23 hours. Hello, those are good practices. Some of you want to work in, work in KPMG, raise up your hand now. You want to work in Deloitte, you want to work in Bridge of UC. I, I'm telling you, ask your colleagues that are working there, they are in audit, they are in advisory, and all that. They will tell you that it is, it takes diligence and resilience. Hello? The thing they take you through when you're writing the test is just the tip of the high part, right? It takes a lot of tenacity, right? And as you are growing, and as you know, you, you have, you know, the elements of, you know, when you, when you, when you're in school and you are, you know, Reading and you are, you know, trying to meet up to assignments and all that. Of course, it tests your diligence. Of course, it tests your resilience because it takes resilience to sustain, you know, that level of, um, um, that level of, it takes resilience to sustain that level of, uh, you know, of, of understanding, you know, to be able to grasp and understand that to, to, to write the test and to do your assignment. But when you are in the workplace, it takes much more. Hello? Hello? So I don't want to, you know, say too much. I want to ask some questions. I don't know if this is an interesting question. I don't want to give you a background of, you know, what I've done, you know, who I am, just in a nutshell. But I want you to, you know, I want you to be more interactive than this. So if you have questions, can you raise up your hand? We can. Hello? Oh, are you shy? You must write it down. Don't be shy now. You know you can't be shy. When you do for interview, you must be shy. Hello? Uh, am I still with undergraduates? Yes! Uh, you cannot be shy, oh. you have to be confident. Or is it because I didn't mention that as one of the nuggets? You have to be confident. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. You have to be. You know, of course you can be with your you are bad, you know, you are gentle, you don't talk too much, you are introvert. Yes, well, it's fine that you are introvert. But there are some times that you know you have to put your best foot forward. You have to be confident. So I want confidence on the very to raise up your hands. Right? If you have any question, raise up your hand confidently. No question. Okay, please, can you come forward? So if you have questions, please come forward. You can write them down as well. If you are very shy. Either for her or any of the other yes. previous speakers. Any other person? Please come, just come. I expect that I'll have at least three students from Kings University. Some of these are not my number, you cannot ask questions. You cannot ask questions, what's your number now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, please come forward. 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 So please introduce yourselves and um, let us know who the question is directly. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, my name is Benjamin. Benjamin Ali Bojan. I'm a theory of the accounting department. I want to say thank you for this session. Uh, okay, my question is directed to you. I want to ask you for the relativity of what we do in class at the moment with the outside world. How, how far is how far? How far apart is what we do in class now from what we do in class? Can I take you one by one, or we should finish all the questions? Okay, so accounting. I'm addressing people that are studying accounting now, but of course, you can also, you know, I'm sure for some of you, things are very related. Accounting is one of the. It's, it's a broad field. Hello, I'm sure you are doing 100 them, you are probably doing a lot of GSTs and doing economics, doing this and people that get to 300, they start doing real accounting courses, start doing um, advanced financial accounting, management accounting, costing and, and all the interesting stuff. So, depending on where you work,
For instance, if you take up a job in a manufacturing company, you probably need to do a lot of costing and managing accounting. Are we together? Hello? Are we do you have 400 ever come to here? Yes. yes. If you take up a job in a manufacturing company, right, you'll be doing a lot of team and manager, management accounting type. So you'll be applying your knowledge of costing, you're applying your knowledge of management accounting to your job. However, if you take a job in a company where you are doing more financial reporting, you probably not do you are doing costing and managerial accounting or management accounting. You will not do it at all. Are we together? So in that kind of, for that kind of job, you know, your IFRS, you know, and uh, your financial reporting, you know, how to advance financial reporting, for instance, if the company is a good uh, company and you're using doing your group account, will be relevant. If you take up a job in an, in, you know, as an internal, in an internal audit um, um, department, for instance, you know, your internal, you know, you're going to pay costs, you're going to pay costs around that, even in your auditing course and also your internal audit course, you will do, you know, some of the things you're going to learn in that course to be ready when you're in that department. Internal control and audits. Are we together? There's also another part of our course that is called forensic accounting. If you pick up a job in maybe like all these consulting firms that start the forensic practice, of course, that what you've done in forensic will be relevant and your audit and investigation will be relevant. So I'm just telling you that accounting is wrong. In my own, for my own background, I did financial advisory. So the part of accounting that was most relevant to me was financial statement analysis, which we did all that advanced financial accounting, and management, and financial management. Are we together? Was financial management, and I'm not, I, I don't do management accounting in the office, I don't do corporate accounting, I don't even do all this, I don't do forensic. So accounting is extremely broad. You have to ask yourself, which part of accounting do I like? And which part of accounting do I want to you know, advance in? If I want to work, it has also a very, one of, the, one of the very important part of accounting, taxation. And there are some people that all they do is tax, and they're not even touching anything around all this, or they're not touching anything around financial reporting and all that. So what you do in school is extremely relevant, depending on the area you decide to focus on. I don't know, I know we have one mommy. Um, I don't know if you agree what I've what I've what said. I, I, I have people that are experienced in the field as well. Depending on the area you are trying your focusing on, that will determine the type of accounting that you would most use in the workplace. Any I don't know, do I answer your question? Yes, yeah. very good. Thank you very much. A warm round of applause for that. If you have any questions, you can give them to Mr. Kolami or Mr. Dio. Uh, my question is, um, is for you. You are a CEO, and I want to know the process that you took to get the things that already happened to the company. So, sir, it's here. Wow, <laughs> that's an interesting one. I think uh, CFO is uh, <laughs> okay. What I did get yeah, actually, uh, interestingly, I did not really set out to be a CFO because, as I said, I told you that I enjoy lecturing, right? I enjoy teaching. I remember when I was in Cornwall, then one of my lecturers, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Adikoli, was telling me that, oh, that he would advise me to have um, industry experience for like five years before coming into teaching because you knew I wanted to just uh, look ahead and do my master's, my PhD then. <laughs> so I think I went into the industry because of that advice. So, and you know, because I did some consulting and when I was in Chile, the opportunity for CFO came. So, for me, it was not a, depending on what the company was looking for, CFO job, you know, CFO means Chief Financial Officer for some of you that don't know. It's, uh, the job is basically, you know, you are responsible for the financial strategy of that company. Are we together? Everything like you are responsible for the financial strategy of that company, and uh, you, you, you are um, 
the day-to-day -day functioning of the finance department and you know the corporate from my company we have finance department, we have corporate finance, we have revenue assurance, you know, responsible for those functions. So depending on what the company is looking for, the path can be different. Are we together? My company wanted someone that have, you know, a finance background. Because we wanted someone that can, you know, someone that understands uh, fundraising, that understands how to raise capital. We wanted someone that understands um, um, managers and acquisition. And my own background is in financial advisory. So I've done things around fundraising, financial acquisition for companies, you know, across sub Saharan Africa. So when we were looking for a CFO, that was, yeah, that was the major criteria that we wanted. But so, we want a CFO that is financial reporting for us. Right, of course they understand financial reporting because of, you cannot do financial advice without having a deep understanding of financial reporting. But of course my 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 core competence when the reason why they wanted you know me then was because they wanted to do that. But of course we want to be able that financial reporting for us. So they make for someone that has a audit background or a control background, an internal control background. So the part is not there is no more stress part to it. But what if you want to be a CFO, from the career choice you make, from the job you pick up at entry level, determines, you know, how fast you'll be a CFO. I, 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 was, um, I became CFO in my company uh, in 2017, and that was uh, seven years, that was the seven years at Hotel YS, it was, was pretty short and it was just better, right? But some people will take them longer. Right, so the job you take, my, I was positioned for that, you know, at a very, you know, you know a very short part, I was in a fast part because of the background I had, because of the finance background I had, because of KPMG and GDO, so that made the job faster for me. Because now you know, if you work in a regular uh, financial or financial, finance part of the company, you know, it might grow in three years, it might take years, so it could take them 20 years to become a year. CFO. So the part of shoot. If you know that's very important, it's very important, right? And um, also, uh, you know, some of the things you might need to pick up along the line. Some people might need to be a financial controller before they become a CFO, right? A financial controller about to work around the accounting. CFO is not about the accounting, it's about finance, which includes accounting. Are we together? So your knowledge of finance to be very critical if you want to be a CFO. Thank you very much. A round of applause for that. I thought someone would even come and ask the boss out. How can I become a boss of the university? I'm training this school, please don't. She's here. She's here. She's here. She's here. She's here. She's here.
and I will ask why they say they don't have pencils. And they will tell me when you have ten, when you have ten days, or you are now in school, will you use part of your money to take care of that? So with that is really not expensive. I have extra or what we call buffer. So most times, let let me start with another marketing aspect. Recently we came up with a product that says save for me. So what I would advise you to do is this: have a target, have a goal that between January and March I want to achieve this. If you, are, if you put your heart to it, when you are coming to school, they give you money. When you get to school, the first thing you do is to pick what you wish or what you have planned to save for that short period and put it somewhere. But one thing you need to know, discipline. If you are not disciplined, you can't save. Discipline. You need to be very, very disciplined. Because if you are disciplined, you will be able to monitor when and how to save. As it is difficult for you to save, that is how it will be difficult for one to achieve. So saving has to do with a serious disciplined mind. So you need to be disciplined for you to be able to save for a long period. I hope I've answered the person's question.
I think I just want to bring to our notice one of the things that the speaker said. She said you should focus on your studies and your professional qualifications because every person out there also has the same thing. So for those of you who are doing ICAM right now, focus on it because when you go out, you discover that those out there, they also have the ICAM. Am I correct? Those out there, they also have the two ones. Those out there, they also have the first class. Sorry, I had to take this, but it's quite long. Well, my question goes to this year. Okay. Why is there most conflict among the criteria of 65 years as experience for employees at the age bracket of 25 to 25 years old? And for me, private university students who don't have that exposure to get that experience are still trying to get certificates and all. Um, those criteria don't give us that opportunity to get employed for that job or those jobs that I need. So I don't know what's your take on that. So we're going to go ahead and answer the questions. I'll be glad if we can do our answers in two minutes. Tops for each question, two minutes. All right, so um, I have two questions from you, sir. The first one, the first aspect is how wrestling managed my time. Considering academics, they're also considering my business life. And the second question is, my advice, the way I pen it down is to break your barrier and get what you want to do. As for the aspect of time, the truth is, like I said during my talk, something always has to suffer. Our hope of something, I am not good. I'm intelligent enough to know that I can get this done. This is the third time I'm in the university setting so trying to get to my first degree. And of course, when you say, can you hold on? Can we have your attention, please? Do not have gone round, water has gone round. So let's have your attention. He said something now and I was expecting a response and I didn't even get that reaction to that statement. I shall stop with you. Alright, so managing my time, how best I get to do that? First thing I said was, something always has to suffer, which I made in the statement about where I'm at. Something always has to give, so something else can come through. And then my second statement, which I said, is that I am that good. I know myself well enough. I am intelligent enough to know that I can get this done. All I have to do is put my mind to it. Like I said, I was once in about coming at one university trying to get a degree in the science program. And I was there for about four years. And then one day I was reading for a test. And I looked at the note I was reading. It was chemistry, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what exactly am I doing? That was not what I wanted to at all. And that very afternoon, I did not go back. I disappeared for six months. Family didn't know where I was, no one knew where I was. Had to go soon out of me. Get myself. Because that was not me. That was not where I wanted to be. Okay, a lot of fun. <laughs> Alright, so when I got back, I had a plan. I've always known money is my drive. As selfish as it sounds, as wrong as it sounds, money is what keeps me going. Because I have to make money to meet those responsibilities that are daunting every day. When I got to this school, it was my grace. I got a phone call, I was at the business meeting, I got a phone call. We needed to resume here, you have an admission with the best thing to do. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't apply to this school. The next morning I was here, and that's 17, 18 months ago. Today I am glad to God, to my family, to everyone that is a member of management sitting here. They have helped me get to this point where I am today. What I've been able to accomplish till now, I never knew I could, if I'm sorry, because I thought, just being in the world and doing everything I wanted, that was all that mattered. But with them, with God, with everything that's happened, I am grateful because now I feel like what exactly was I did all that time. Now academics is key, but I'm able to find my time because I know I have to read for exams, so no business matters for that week. After exams, we are traveling all the time. Before you can, okay, start so last semester, I had 20% attendance. Before time, I told all my lecturers, this is the situation. We had six projects to execute last semester. I was there finding all of them. I told them straight up, this is what it is. This is where I get the I can be present for this class. I won't be present for this. I 
They are looking for this thing. And they all give them the ultimate of the cost, like I said, I am that good. Second question was how I get to break barriers. I read the story, one minute story to just answer that. Uh, I was a butcher in Kiri Siku. Like, I'm, I'm a brand ambassador for our bike. I was presenting a few weeks ago at Abuja and uh, I met with one of the founding partners for one of the major universities that is not coming today. Now. Please, the staff. Please, the staff. Thank you. Alright, so I met one of the founding partners for a new university coming up. And my question was, I need to get into the university. I need to make sure they approve our bike before they implement it. Because now they're just constructing their permanent site. How best to do that? Uh, I went about it the wrong way, which was all for me, but it was the wrong way. I googled it all. I saw who he was, I saw his family, I saw who he had. I saw his daughter, a beautiful girl, and I was like, okay, son of a baby. I looked up her number, I called his daughter, I introduced myself. She was not who I which I knew about. She saw the right of his book, which I knew not about the fact that I dated his daughter for one week, which is like I said, it's the wrong way. I gave up his daughter for one week, and in that one week, she got me an introduction to her. When I was done presenting to her, she says the next day at that point that the new plan will get married to my sister. I was that good. And I said, I am that good. So I sold myself. I sold myself to her. So the question is how to break my life. The truth is, you always have to know who you're going after. What are they about? What's the best avenue you have? If I come in here now, the hierarchy says the vice chancellor is at the top. But the vice chancellor has his people. You can't always access the vice chancellor. There are people in this university that know that the best way to get to the vice chancellor is to get to the secretary. The secretary is the vice chancellor to someone else. When you look at the get up in the business office, the only place you should go to is the secretary. Once you're able to reform your man, you're able to give her everything she requires, and your letter is coming out of the next thing. That's the one way. So you need to know who you're going after, how best they are, how they function, and you get what you're going after. Thank you very much. Please remember, he said that strategy is the wrong one. So no matter what that one. It's written. So the first question said that um, it's about what are the arms that are being created for not focusing on part of your person. Um, am I correct? Okay, you gave the uh, illustration about tax. I do like tax. Right? You cannot like all your cousins. I can I can tell you for free. I did not like what you said on the school. I I did well in it, but I did not like it. I did not like it. In fact, when I was writing my ATS3, one of the cousins in ATS3 was then was um what is um what's the name again? Preparation of the financial statement in ATS3. You 
know, is a, is one of the major, is a challenge for me. I have to put in the extra hours. I have to put in the extra time to kind of understand what they're talking about. Are we together? So for class, the same thing. Right? If you know that it's something that you struggle with, I'm going to tell you for free, tax is one of the most exciting parts of accounting. I say, just take it from me and just go without understanding and try to break the barrier of taxation. And there are very good textbooks that you can use. I remember when I was in school, I used to tell you what's Cheyo Cho. I don't know if it's still existing. Yes. Is it still existing? Cheyo Cho? Yes. <laughs> that textbook was very good. <laughs> It was, look for it. You can check your library in school. It was very simple. He broke it down and I understood the concept. Look for Sheyo. I'm sure there are a lot of other textbooks. Go to your lecturer. I can recommend good textbooks for you. Because there's some textbooks that you pick. Then when I was doing what is, there's this uh, textbook from the UK. There's this textbook that I don't remember their name now. They always like blue and yellow. They have different, they have managed manage by family, they have internal culture, they have like different kinds. Like I brought up plenty, go and get the edgy the, the, like them, I have to drop them. The textbook I used one friend, one of the textbook I saw my auntie's like my auntie said she was a child accountant and I was in the house and I saw one said free schools of auditing. That was a textbook, very small test, that was what I used, and that was what you know explained auditing to me. It was like a big uh textbook from the UK. So you might be surprised. There are some I remember when we school, there are some textbooks that we use financial accounting. That just simplifies the whole English and your process. So, look for what works for you. Get the books that will help you. Also, look for people that understand the course. I remember that was in school. One of the things that I did there was I had study groups and also participated in tutorial because sometimes when you teach, you know, and at the same time, if you are the other end of receiving, imagine if you are the one that is attending the tutorial, if you actively pursue, sometimes you have to actively pursue some people. You know, get what you want. If you are always struggling with that transition, so you can actually understand it in your class and seem to know it. No knowledge is lost. Right? You might not appreciate it as much, but if you understand the principle, in case you meet later on in future, because you have never been tell. Is it clear? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. The second question is <laughs> it's quite hard. You know, and, and to be honest with you, it's one of the problems we are facing in Nigeria. And the problem is simple. There is oversupply. Are we together? Do you know the, I don't know the numbers, but I can imagine the total number of graduates that the universities are churning out every year. Right? And the way it is now, everybody is having two one and four class. Even though they are across, they are having four class. And I think a lot of them will finish in, in the UK because now, I think now they will discuss the, the program where you can stay and work. But a lot, a lot of a lot of them in, in the last six, seven years, after they school in the UK, they're not going to go back to the Japan for the same job that you that you have stayed in Nigeria all the while looking for. So the end is because of cost of time. And you can't take that away. So what do companies do? I'm not an HR expert, but what do companies do sort of, you know, they receive, you know, you send in an application that you give for, uh, you have to give for a, a management training, right? So companies have this graduate training, management training program, and you get thousands of seats, and you only want five. You only want five, you got one thousand. Where do you start from? Right? What companies, what HR now do sometimes is they put in a lot of barrier to reduce the number of applications, but that doesn't mean that they still don't get tons and tons of applications and CVs, and those CVs are equally as good. So it is unfortunate that the environment we find ourselves in is such that people are now requiring for some jobs, doing five years experience for jobs that should be zero experience or just to uh, NYC. But what do I advise? You know, sometimes I, I just have to uh, so now I've, I've been seeing it in recent years. That you don't have a lot of people doing internship. Are we together? Are we together? I know some of you are in accounting, you are in finance, your, your, your internship is your ICAN. It's fine. My internship was my ICAN when I was in school. I didn't do any internship. I was always in school for the ICAN uh, uh, lectures. But at the same time, for some of you that are not in accounting and you are in other courses, as much as possible, you can do internship. Do. And why is that important? It gives you an understanding of how the how the business world is like. It gives the opportunity to network with people that can probably get you the job. Are we together? Because there's some people that they intend somewhere they end up working there. So people intend somewhere, people that they 
but you know just to be relevant and add value to life. I think on behalf of the Board of Department, on behalf of the Human University, I don't want to go into the value we have added to the to the campus. Is it branded? We, we 
towards the battery light for a better tomorrow. So we have identified some accounting students. One way or the other, they are having challenges. They will pay their fees. So the Muslim family is going to support them with the payment, part payment of their fees. Please come forward and do one more. It's a couple of our love. What's that piece of one level uh, accounting student? I think you're not a great thing to get back on. We'll just give you a handshake. Now we get money, we get it to our accounts.
without a little far and wide. And what is your area of interest? Is this something you've been doing before, something you just want to start? You know, just like you observe what we've been discussing today. We want our students to be relevant. We want them to go out there and make impact. We have record of our uh, alumni students who have made much impact out there. Some of them are employers of labor. I'm going to start from now. You don't wait until the after you service and maybe a job is not forthcoming before you start thinking of what to do. A business that you have practiced, a business that you have been into for one, two, three, four years, definitely you won't have problem searching for job. When if the job comes fine, if the job is not forthcoming, you are good to go and you are already at the level of And by tomorrow, during the public lecture, we are inviting every one of us to come for the public lecture that we will do tomorrow by 10 a.m. And then we are going to announce the three students that we are going to be empowering. And the Lord will bless us all as we call in Jesus' name. And say a better amen. We will take the vote of thanks and the closing prayer. After the closing prayer, please note that we will all be taking a group photograph outside. We will all take a group photograph outside. And then, Larry College of Education, you also have a special photograph to take, as well as King's University. Please uh, join me in welcoming Mr. Nicola B. from the Washington Department. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I want to thank every one of us for coming. On behalf of the Bossa, the Devil Bossa, the entire Bossa staff, we want to thank every one of you. The guest speaker, we want to thank you for coming. And I will start by the representative of the Vice Chancellor. In Natasha, thank you. And also the head of the department present, we thank you for coming. Redeemer University staff, we thank you for coming to create this occasion. And also our guest speakers. Mm -hmm. Mr. Isaac Adam, you are welcome. Mr. Peter, thank you for coming. And then Mr. Akil, Mr. Aid, on behalf of Mr. Adidi Adibayo. Thank you for coming. And to King's University, the staff and the students, thank you, we appreciate you for coming. Also, the Lowry College, we really appreciate you. And as we return to our various quarters, I pray that the presence of God will go with us in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to grace this occasion. Shall we please rise up on our feet and we take the closing prayer? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the opportunity given to us to be able to come together. Lord, we glorify you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the service of this program. Lord, we bless the name of Jesus. And as we are returning, hold on. Father, we pray that your friends will go with each one of us in Jesus' name. 